Give the man his flower while he's alive. Amen. Amen. All right, let us stand for the reading of the word. Sister Ernestine, all of you, come sit down so we can hear the word. Amen. The hurry or it's about 12 30. I want to bless the Lord. I'm not going to keep it more than three hours. I just played. We're going to read the first reading, going to come from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 12. And then our second scripture reading will be coming from the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 4, I believe, verse 5. 2nd King, chapter 2, verse 2. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. So let's look at the verse real quickly so we can proceed. 2, verse 12. 2nd King, chapter 2, verse 12. 2nd King, 2, 12. Second King 2 verse 12. If you're just coming, you gotta pin me, okay? All right. Obina, can see one is Second King chapter two. Oh, thank you. Second King chapter 2 and verse 3. Let us read together. One, two, three, go. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rang them into two pieces. My God. First Corinthians 4 5. First Corinthians 4 5. My father, my father, he cried. He cried. First Corinthians 4 verse 5. He cried, my father. verse 5 <clears throat> I believe it's first Corinthians 4 5 I believe you see I said I, I, I misplaced my glasses so you got to forgive me hallelujah now look at second Corinthians 4 5 it could be for second Corinthians somebody can borrow me that glasses Let me be let me make sure of my scripture please forgive me viewers i could have lost glasses as my wife is saying amen in jesus mighty name um, thank you lord Okay, First Corinthians four fifteen. I was right, but I didn't get the verse. Amen. I look. At, I didn't see the one. Sorry, five, but I didn't see the one. So it's First Corinthians chapter four verse fifteen. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody gonna be blessed tonight. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I'm very very happy. I'm sure somebody gonna be blessed. Amen. Let us be together. One, two, three, go. For though ye have ten thousand instructions in Christ, yet now many fathers. For in Christ I have become you through the gospel. Father, we thank you for your word. We bless you for this day. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Take your seat and God bless you. And be focused, okay? Let be focused and hear the word. And let you hear the word. He cried 
now, my father, my father. Then he saw him no more. There are many teachers, but there are few fathers. I want to first of all give God a glory for my beautiful wife as well as every day. Amen. Amen. Joshua, just lower a little bit. Amen. And I bless God for Pastor Kofa, Bishop, Bishop Cummings, my own brother, and all the pastors and deacons and deaconess in this place. We want to bless the Lord for you. Especially the music department will bless the Lord for their work. Amen. <clears throat> I was on the phone with Bishop a few days ago. And this is the exact word he said. Happy Father Day to him. Let help me celebrate Bishop John Kunku. Amen. Happy Father Day, wherever he is watching. Amen. Home or in church, we say Happy Father Day. We love you. And we thank God that you we have you as a father. Amen. He called me on the phone and he was saying, <clears throat> and then Bishop come in here, confirmed that yesterday while we was talking. In a ministry that survived seven years, there's no devil can break it. No demon can break it. Because seven is the number of completion. On the seventh day, God rested. There will be a rim and roll that will be shaking. But if you survive seven years, and he said that among other things. He said, the people that will complete seven years with you, that the people that God sent to you. The people that will start with and, and reach you seven years, that the people that pay attention, pray for them, are the people that God sent to you. Because not everybody will complete seven years with you. And I didn't take that word for granted. I fasted and I prayed strong for people that God will help me God, God, God will help me to complete this journey. The number seven is the number of what? Completion. I listened to the late Archbishop Bensi Idahosa from Nigeria. Strong man of God. Very, very powerful. He said something in uh, it all on Facebook. It all on, on YouTube. Some people carry the late TB Joshua complained to him about him. You, you, you read that? All right. About him, who his spiritual father, if he born again, and all of that. And he, the hosa, the father at that time, he said, any man of God, if that man is not of God, he will not last seven years. But if he lasts seven years, he's of God. Because he believed that the number seven, when you survive seven, any marriage or any marriage that survived the year seven, no demon can try you in Jesus' mighty name. No demon, except you decide to leave. Like how some of you decide to leave, but don't leave. Somebody shout hallelujah. So he was saying this thing. I said, oh my goodness, and I bless God for a father like that, amen, who continue to open our eyes to some things. I want to say to you, Goshen Universal Church of God, this coming week, or this week we are in already. We're already in a week. It's going to make us seven years. Seven years. From 2014, June the 29th, Longer Ministry in Arlington. In a building, I remember I see night, nice, some kind of night who or some kind of night brother who something. I don't even know what is that, but I just went to the building and we launched a church. And if ever since that time, God been faithful. Amen. And I bless the Lord so much. Hallelujah. From Thursday to Sunday, I want you to reschedule whatever you have scheduled, not to miss this week. It won't be a good thing you call me your father and you love the church and all of a sudden come and I see you in the church because there are a lot of people that are coming this week. Bought their own plane tickets. Some driving. They're going to be here. And when they come, they see they'll say, but all the great men of God that we hear about every day on the prayer line, what's happening? Where, where, is, where, where are his people? So I want to, I want to, I want to talk to us. I want to talk to us that we should be here from Thursday. 
ask for the excuse on your job, sacrifice for God this week, our birthday. I want the money shoot to be here from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And God will surely bless you in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Bless your word that coming. Let your people not be the hearer, but let them be the doer. In Jesus' mighty name. From the passage of scripture we read, I want to title this theme for this Sunday. You need a father. <clears throat> My topic here tonight or this afternoon that is entitled, You Need a Father. Somebody say, You need a father. Look at your, I want you to talk back to me. I want you to be focused. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, You need a father. And somebody might say, Okay, I already got a father. I don't need one. But there are three kind of fathers I want to introduce to you. Set back. <clears throat> don't either you know it all and shut your ear down. But I want you to sit back, even if you know it, and listen to the nonsense I'm about to tell you. Amen? I borrow one minute of God's term. You can take the thing and throw the nonsense out. I mean the non out. Amen? In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <clears throat> even if you don't like it, just take the thing and throw the non out. There's a need for a father. Elisha cried out, my father, my father. The apostle Paul came back and he said, there were many instructors, but there were few fathers. The importance of a father. Let me, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. I'm talking to father. I'm talking to father and, and also, you know, children as well. The importance of a father. This father day that we celebrating, it was not accepted until 1972. 1972, it was accepted in America, even though it was in other countries, 1505 and all of that. But America actually accepted the, this, this father day celebration, or, or it came to become a holiday in 1972 by a president called Nixon at the time. But it should be too, it was the mother day that we initiated fresh. I don't know what mother, we mean all we fresh, anything, I don't know, amen. It was mother, it was mother that's, that, that's the reason why y'all start with me that build and I come in with my own. Men that build, something like that, amen. <laughs> because women always start something fresh. They are, they, women can always be the first to start stuff. I'm telling you. Mother Day was accepted in 1914. And if you come from 1914 to 1972, <laughs> many years. It meant somebody. When I said by I said, I said, but women always start everything. They always be the first. They started well, accepted in 1914 and the main king way. That's why when Satan ready to go to the, go come to your family, he go to the woman first. Because they were first. They were the first to, to announce the resurrection of Jesus. Early morning, morning, Mary and Martha went to the grave. And they saw the empty grave, the rain that he said. The angel appeared to them. They said, Why are you looking for the dead? I mean, for the living among the dead. He's risen. It was, it was a woman. They always the first. We mean always the first. In everything, even in a fight, they always fight. The first. <laughs> Hallelujah. They, they just wanted to be fresh in everything. Listen to me. Saint Mary was not saved until a woman carried the gospel. She was the first evangelist, was a woman. The woman at the where? When she encountered Jesus, she ran in the city. Come and see. The man who told me everything. I respect women and I love women. Come on, clap for all the ladies in this house. Amen. <laughs> listen to me. Listen in very well. The word father, there's nowhere in the battles 
referred to a man. A word father really is not just a word that just specifically directed to a man. Now the meaning of father, meaning the one you can feed on, a source, the one who can put things together. That's the meaning of father. Are you with me? Amen. I want you to be with me. You, you will get in somewhere. Amen. Father literally does not have to be, it doesn't have to be referred to, to a man. A woman can be a father. Listen, listen. It is so easy for a woman to step into fatherhood than for a man to step into motherhood. Amen, somebody. They have a lot of single mothers that raised their children when father was not around. They took the place of a father because the word father me to feed on a source. The word father me put together, the one who put you together, putting things together. The one you look up to, the provider. That's why I mean the one who provides. So if a man is not providing, if the woman is providing, she take the father who position. Because the one father me to feed on. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to talk to you the three distinct kind of fathers. That there's a need for a father. If you listen to the message far and near, if you don't have a father, I want to tell you, you're making a mistake. Far one. There are a lot of things we overlook. There are a lot of things we throw out the window because we don't need them. But just because you don't need them does not mean that it's not important or it is not ordained by God. There are so many things that people will throw out because they don't need them, but it is ordained by God. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Maybe some people will say, I don't need a father. I do everything. I mean, I don't need to, to have a father. Just because you're against it does not mean that it don't exist. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Somebody say, I need, I need a, father. a father. Now hear me and hear me very well. There's no way, I want to talk about the greatest father, which is God first. There's no way God could be a father if God didn't have children. You can't be a father if you don't have children. All right, I'm going there. Amen? Amen? I'm going there. Maybe somebody will say, I ain't got no child, so am I not a father? I'm coming. You will get it soon. Somebody say, you'll get it soon. If God was not going to create the universe and put people in it, the animals were not going to call him father. The tree was not going to call him father. It is us that make God father. <laughs> Are you getting there? It is all who make him to be father. He is the most high and is the most distinct and the most honorable and the most higher father. In fact, it is God who introduced fatherhood on earth. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. It is seed that introduced fatherhood because God respects and honor fatherhood so much that he introduced a fatherhood on earth. That make it so important and so much powerful. Many are despising fathers. Many don't know how to talk to fathers. Many just disrespect people in their heart. Now the word father, no. some of them may say, okay, I don't need to have father or spiritual father or biological father. I got my father in heaven, which is God. I'm not saying you're wrong, but let me correct you. God said, if you don't respect men on earth, you don't have no respect for me. Have you not read that before? He said, how can you say you love God and you don't love men that he created? Two persons died, to paraphrase this, two persons died, one went to hell, one went to heaven, speaking about Jesus. And one went in hell, tormented. He said, can you just dip your finger in the water because I'm thirsty? And one said, no, 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 there's a demarcation, there's, there's, a, there's a line, I can't come to where you are. Then the man who was tormented said, I have five brothers on earth. Can somebody leave from here and go talk to them? And go advise them and talk to them? And the Lord said, 
No one can come from the grave and go talk to them. Why? Because they have fathers. They got Abraham. They got this person. They got the pastors. They got the teacher there. If they don't listen to them, no one will leave from the dead and go listen to them. I mean, and go preach to them. So God is saying, in, short, in, 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 in another word, God is saying, if you don't honor your father that on earth, how can you give him honor? Because he the one place this father thing on planet earth. It is God who make you. It is God who introduce the fatherhood. And he introduce children to us. That's why it's so important to reference him. Amen, somebody. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. So it is God who introduce fatherhood now. There are three distinct kind of father. One is the heavenly father. What Jesus all the time talk about when you pray, pray to your heavenly father. We know that, that your heavenly father. You know how much you have heavenly father. God wants you to know that there are also an earthly father. But God said that if you don't have an earthly father, if you don't have a mother, I mean, a spiritual father, a spiritual mother, not that if you don't have. But God is trying to tell that if they even forsake you, then he, God, will never forsake you. But there is a need for a father's. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Let me help you. I know you're getting quiet, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen to me. The truth of the matter is, hear me well. I don't need to wait for June to celebrate my father. I don't need to wait for June to honor my father. Because every day is a father day. Why in case because the world father me feet on? And the world father means someone of your source of, 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 of blessing or someone who bless you, who take care of you. Sort of support. So why in case your father in the house say, if you just take a particular day and say, I'm waiting for June to celebrate my father. And then your father in the house say, I'll wait for June to provide for you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Because it's, it's because every day is a father day. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, every day, every day is a father day. day. You don't have to wait for a particular day. Somebody say hallelujah. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. We don't need no argument. You need a father. Bling, bling, you need a father. God being the only wise God. He put this thing into perspective. We need to hear then so we can live. You don't need to go on a debate or prove anything. Hallelujah. You don't need no debate. You don't need no argument. You need a father. There's a need for a father. Amen. Because you know what? Let me tell you something. Why do you want to argue with somebody who don't believe in a spiritual father? Why do you want to argue with somebody who don't believe? He don't change nothing. Amen, somebody. As a matter of fact, that energy, it takes too much energy to act you. It takes too much effort to act you, to prove to somebody on something that God has ordained. It takes so many energy. It takes so many, so many, so many energy, so much energy try to prove to somebody what God has ordained. So you don't need no argument. You need nothing, you nothing to prove to anybody. God who honor is, who ordain it, it should be accepted. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. As a matter of fact, I read about a man called Smith Walker Wolf, a British pioneer gospel general, general in the faith. And nobody's sick in his ministry. He slap you, he punch you, you get well. Hallelujah. That was his own way of healing people. Bring the sick man, punch you, shake you, get healing. I read about this man, there's something really that, 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 caught, that really catched my attention when I was reading about Smith Walker Wolf. He never read no newspaper, no other book beside the Bible. He didn't read no other book, never read even a pamphlet. He drove newspaper carriers from in front of his house. He drove them away, chased them away. Because he came up to the place to say that reading other things can easily divert your attention sometimes if you're not really granted or strong. Amen. Amen. I know a man that was very close to that was very close to me. He read one book. He was a pastor. He read one book. He don't know who he was anymore. Just by reading one book, 
He didn't know himself. He refused to be a pastor anymore. Yeah, by reading a book. So I'm trying to tell people, the people of God, not everything you read out there is true. Not everything you read in a book is true. The only truth is in the Bible. So what the Bible is saying, that's what we should believe. Not what other books are saying. There are many books now. Many books on theology. Many books on parentals. How to be a good parent and all of that. But if you really read the Bible, the Bible will teach you how to be a good parent. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because many have gone away. And, and, and it would take some time the other day to talk about the voice of deceptions. The voice of deception. Amen. People speaking in different kind of way to discourage people and all of that. If you're not careful, the voice of deception will deceive you and you will end up regretting at the end of the day. It also derives from the thing that we read. If you're not strong enough, you read some things that confuse you. You read some book that confuse you. Satan have a way of grabbing people, catching people, causing them to deviate from the truth. And that's the reason why God has placed this mechanism so that we can be able to see them and live by them. The Bible says he calls them to be Teachers, pastor, apostle, prophet, and evangelist Amen. to enhance the body of Christ. Amen. I don't want to go there right now. Let me talk different things. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Three types of father. We have God and Father. We got your biological father and your spiritual father. There are three distinct fathers. Literally, their interpretation or their meaning is the same. But the God of Abraham, the Almighty God, who initiated the Father who on the earth, he supreme, he's higher than the two fathers that I'm about to talk about. So, Malaysia, hallelujah. Amen. The word father means, as I told you for earlier, it means source, it means provider, it means maker. The one who sees your nakedness is your father. The one who sees your fault, your, the one who sees that you need help, the one who, who put you together is, is called father. He knows what you need. He knows what you want. I'm opportune to minister on this great father day that there's a need of a father. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen, somebody. This means somebody. Amen. You call Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I read something the other day that puzzled me. I don't even want to go there. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. As I go along on this Christian journey, there's a reason why God created you. There's a reason why God put things in place. Because if we follow what God is saying to us, if we follow and do what God wants us to do, many of us will not have some hardship and hard time. Our problem or this generation problem that I've seen on the face of the earth is number one, disobedience. Disobedient. Somebody shout hallelujah. Disobedient and disobedient and disobedient. It's so important to have a father. A father is the one who is disciplined. The reason why a lot of us are running from being a child because we don't want to submit we don't want to be obedient. Mm. So because we don't want to be obedient, we don't want to have fathers. Mm. Because father will chastise you. Amen. Father will correct you. Amen. Now your biological father is a vehicle that God used to bring you on earth. Amen, Amen somebody? Amen. 
He's a vehicle God uses to bring you on earth now. God is telling you, and I appreciate many times, God is telling you that there should, be, there should be a place in your life to be able to honor a father that will feed you, Amen. that will help you Amen. to get to where God wants you to get. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I need a father. Need a father. Look at your neighbor slap and say, I need a father. Need a father. Now listen to me. Just because you, you don't have a child does not make you. I mean, just because you don't have a child does not make you not, not a father. Amen. Having children don't make people father. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Having children don't make you a father. Just because you can do 50 50 don't make you a father. Amen, somebody. What makes you a father? It is the responsibility that attached to the word fatherhood. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Because there are many who have children, but they are not fathers. A father is the one who takes care of what he put there. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now listen to me. A man who don't have father but taking care of other people's children is called a father as well. And it's not about you having it, it's about you taking care. If you can take care of other people's children, you are a father. A father carry, uh, carry some compassion. When you are a father, you carry that compassion for a child. For it's not because it's not yours. But every time you know that you are a father and you have that characteristic as a father. You also have that heart. That heart of love. That heart of caring. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So in the passage of scripture that we just read, Paul, Paul was talking about, he said, we have many mentors. We have many instructors. But there is no father because the father, the real father is so difficult. And listen to me. Hear me very well. Hear me very well. In the spiritual world, in the reign of the spirit, God release a gift. God release a power to every spiritual father. Remember, I said God is a supreme. He's the father of all. He he he, he do what a, a natural father cannot do. But God also gave us a spiritual father. So in, in as a child of God, every child of God need a spiritual father. Amen. In order for your life to go further, Amen. you need a spiritual father. Does not mean that initiate it, that is God who initiate it. I'm not talking about what we do in the flesh, I'm talking about what we do in the spirit. Because if you do it in the spirit, now it becomes spiritual. So God is saying, uh, Hear me and hear me very well. That every man that is born of a woman, you should live by these principles. First of all, you can't be a father if you've never been a child. Every child that you see, or every father that you see, was well, once a child. So there's a connection between father and children. Amen. Amen, somebody. There should be a connection between father and children. Someone will say, Oh, I ain't got no child yet, so I can't be a father. No, you are a father. As long as you have the ability to take care of, to take care of another child. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody shout, I need a father. I need a father. Shout, I need a father. I need a father. Shout, I need a father. I need a father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It's very important. It's very important. It's very important. It's so important. It's so important. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Listen to me. And listen well. And I'm saying I'm taking my own time to teach. I don't want to be jumping here and there. But I want to show, I want to put something inside of you. Now, if you want to terminate your life very early, dishonor of father. I repeat myself. You can write it down. If you want your life to be terminated very early, despise a father. Despise your father. Because the one who you call father. Don't really have to bore you. Amen, somebody. 
Then when you go fighter, they literally don't really have to give birth to you. But your behavior, your attitude as a child to what is pressing. Because as I said earlier, you can't be a father if you don't have children. Now, you don't have to be your own children. It has other children because there are people who are father today who took in a lot of children who are not their own children. Somebody shout hallelujah. I know pastors and bishops around the world who are taking care of a lot of children and they call them father and never have their own children. So the point I'm driving at is that, I, that, 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 that I'm trying to make that every man that is walking on the earth, regardless of your position, this part of your, 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 your anointing on your life, this part of your position or what you have, you need a father because there's a need for a father. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Because a father is one who's going to Train you, the father, the one who's going to help you, the father, the one who's going to instruct you, the father is the one who's going to help you to get there because if you don't have a father, you can't go farther in life. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah! Somebody shout hallelujah! Somebody shout hallelujah! Look at your neighbor, say, Neighbor, do you have a father? Ask him again, say, Do you have a father? Your longevity depends on your father. Somebody give me Ephesians chapter 1. Says verse 2, quickly. Mm. Come and feel this message right now. It's just coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Something coming. I know what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Ephesians says 2. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2. Never despise your father. The one you call father, the one you call papa, never despise him because you know what? Everyone you open your mouth to say, This is my father, and then you open your mouth to dishonor the one you call your father, you are heading to short life. <laughs> You are cutting your destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout it. Let's read that together. One, two, three, go. Honor that father and that mother, which is the first commandment we promise. What's the promise? What's the promise? So in other words, if you dishonor your father, your life goes short. I know many children on this earth, they are very disrespectful. They respond to the highest. Hallelujah. Yeah, there was a civil crisis in my, in, in my home, Liberia. You know, there was a civil crisis, and uh, we saw a lot of uh, young boys and young girls who were holding arms at the age of 10, 12, they were holding arms. And, and because they were holding arms, they were disrespecting other people. They were calling, say, Papa, I respect you, but come on, sit on the ground. Amen, how you agony, you know it so, because everyone's throwing the sign. Everyone, you are small, so your hand. Somebody shout hallelujah. They're going to point gun at you, say, Papi, sit on the ground. I respect you, but sit on the ground. You do respect older people. At the end result today, you find none of them alive. If you want to cut your life short, do respect the one you call father. Never do respect the man that God has placed over you as a father. Now, I like the Bible say, honor that father and that mother, because you know what? A mother can also walk in the step of a father. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There are many children that are successful today. There were no father in their life. But their mother was there struggling. Their mother was there crying. Their mother was there providing. Their mother was there. Some mother went out of the way to even be, I'm sorry to say, to even be a prostitute yet to help. A father cannot be a prostitute to feed their child. But a mother can, mother can take that race, can take shame, can take disgrace just to put food on the table for a child. You don't know what mother go through. When father are snowing at the middle of the night, mother is breastfeeding. Oh my goodness, nobody helping me. Yet. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And when you tell you, you want to wake up, oh honey, you know I got to go to work. Let me sleep. <laughs> okay, somebody just laughed. Amen, somebody. But the truth of the matter is, mother do the higher work than even the sixth to eighth job that you are doing. Mother is one who, yeah, the, she need pimples, he need pimples, the dapper is work, he need to eat, need to sleep, need to bath. Mother is doing everything. Mother wants to be paid. Even a million dollar pay mom because she do higher work. She step into that father. When you were your friends, mother, there. So then I'm mother there, but I want to let you know, mother, I also call father. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Did I hear somebody talking? Okay. Yeah, if you say this to me. So, I, I, I didn't hear, did I hear something? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, love your father. Look at somebody and say, love your father. People are like, well, let me tell you something. It brings so much honor. Amen. There are people who now, the devil has catapulted their brain. They don't have no spiritual father anymore. They don't even believe in spiritual father anymore. I was telling my wife a story one time. Listen to me. Hear me. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm going to get out of illustration right now. Let me get out of illustration. Let me get out of illustration. Joshua, come here. Oh, Joshua, you too big. Oh, no, anyway, come. Come, Joshua. Come, Joshua. Come on. Who asked me Joshua over there? Come on. Talking about the one. Okay, now you. Now you can say, okay, come. I'm talking about the fireball. Come on, fireball. <laughs> now they need the. Okay, go sit down, Joshua. You too, you too, you too. All right, give me a, is that divine? Why you need divine or favor? Divine, come on, divine, come on. Come, divine. Come on, Sean. What's your name? Eh? Eric, Eric come on. I, I, want, I want to show you something like that. I don't want to do it with people because people are too big. Amen? Come here. Let me show you something. Let me show you the trick of the devil. The devil don't want you to have a father so you can submit to a father. Come right here. Come right here. Sing right here. I need one more. I need one more. Is there any more? Is there any more? It don't matter if it's a girl, but it's inside. Is there any more? Hallelujah. One more coming. Football player or what? Soccer player. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? I need one more. Give me one more. Something is going to happen. No, 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 go sit down. You're too short. Come, 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 come. All right, he can come. No problem, he can come. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Get there. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Come, Devon, come. Come, come. Favor, come on. Come to, come, come. Before you come. Come. <laughs> oh. I say she said I can't leave behind. See right here. Wow. Oh, but she, where's she going? Oh, she going straight up. Oh, she did not. <laughs> come right here, come right here. See right here. Come stand here. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Watch this. Let me do this. Amen. Come closer. Everybody stick together. Stick together. Y'all stick together. Divine, y'all stick together. I want to show you something that the devil always won. Stay right here. Mm hmm. Feel what's right there. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Now you see what I'm saying? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Now, everyone in there together, right? Everybody together here. Not together. Not together. Now, let me play a role of the devil a little bit. I'm not. Cover yeah. myself with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Now, when the devil see people together like day, he go far from them. Because you know what? He can't pick everybody out at the same time. Are you hear what I'm saying? So the devil will not be able to pick people all together because they are together. He can't he can pick them together Amen. when they are together. Amen. So what the devil does, he scatter people, he brings confusion and scatter people like that. And scatter and cause you to leave the church. And cause you to leave your honor, your spiritual father. And cause you to be single. And divide you and divide you. I said devil will fight hard to divide you. He can easily pick you up and carry you. Because why? He divide you. That's what the Bible says. You not that we stay, but divided we fall. So until we become together, until we are together, Satan cannot do nothing when people are together. That's why the devil now will try his best to divide you, to divide us, to divide people. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because whenever you're together, go sit down. Someone that comes to the Lord. <coughs> when people are together, that's why Jesus said, He said, the horse that divided, the horse that divided what? Cannot stand. So if Satan divides himself, how will he be able to stand? So the devil will make sure you're not on a courage, 
the devil will make sure that you don't believe in the spiritual father, the devil will make sure to scatter you. That's the reason why the coronavirus it was initiated by satanic people, by satanic demons, in order to separate people and say no, no social distance should be established. People will not come together because the devil knows when you come together, something happens, you break you, you break every satanic. Somebody shout hallelujah. Listen, when the devil attack a home, the first thing he does, when he attack the home, he order, I mean, the first thing the devil want to do when the devil, when the devil want to scatter a family, the first thing he do, he go to one person and play on your mind so you can hit the other person. So you don't want to see the other person. Somebody shout hallelujah. The man will start sleeping in the guest room. God forbid. Somebody say amen. I can have 10 guest room. If my wife don't want to see me, I'm going to, any room she go in, I'm going there. Can I talk to somebody here? Oh, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. I have talked to a lot of men in the past. They will tell me, oh, I got two master bedroom, my wife in one. God forbid. What should your wife be doing in another room? You are a fool. I don't know how to sleep with all that teshi. Okay, I'll leave that alone. Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, Maradu, you know I'm right here. Come on, give me my hands. You know I'm right. Hey, Amen. Pastor, I know I'm right. You can't. You, you gotta, you gotta touch. You gotta touch. Look at your neighbor and say, I gotta touch. So the devil, why is it the devil will bring confusion? Amen. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Slow down, small. Let me tell you something. I said about women too much, so much. I can't wait to launch my book on women. On one more, amen. I, I said about them so much. When women don't want to be battled at night, they start off for nothing confusion, for nothing fight. In the morning, in the afternoon, even you do nothing, they will start a fight so they can be battled. Because they know when you people are fighting, you don't want to be battled. Nothing works, nothing happens. So I learned something. Somebody said, I learned something. Anything that starts, say sorry. What I'm wrong. <laughs> Nobody hear what I'm saying. Somebody shout hallelujah. Anything that starts, say sorry. If I'm wrong, I say sorry. If you want, I say sorry. If you want peace, I will say, Mama, I beg you, what going on? Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody shout hallelujah. Because when they start and you join them, you on your own at night. Nobody hear what I'm saying? That devil is a liar. Somebody shout hallelujah. For the Bible says, for the thief coming, now but the sea to kill and to destroy. I come against every satanic plan over your life this hour in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every division in your life in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Wait, I come into that thing. Let me end this thing quickly. Somebody say amen. So you still receive your father? Because when you're going through some things that a doctor can't take care of, when you're going through some things that you, 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 you can't handle. Your biologic God father cannot handle. And you call him God. And God is saying, how will you leave your spiritual father that I gave you and you come into me? Go to him. Let him intercede for you. Look at the book of Ezekiel 22 verse 30. Let me help you. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. Let's go there real quickly. I'm going to preach this thing. Somebody going to get saved today. Somebody shout hallelujah. When they start for I don't join them. Keep my mouth shut. You can talk all you want to talk. I'm sorry. You need a gift, I will get it. Somebody say amen. I know them. Little thing. First of all, they were asking for a cup of water. Can, you, can I give you water to drink? Can you give me water to drink? She said, hey, amen. I tell you, hey. You can do nothing for somebody. Somebody say talk. You see what I'm saying? I will talk. I will talk. Amen? Just a cup of water. They can bring argument. I'm not talking about me and my wife. I'm not talking about this woman. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm talking about marriage in general. 
Amen. Little thing. Just little thing. So when the devil want to destroy your family, brother knows that, and Obina, what the devil does is that he brings confusion. If you he, if he know that he can, and, and 95% of the confusion comes from the wife. Because the devil knows he's quicker to convince a woman than to convince the man. Why? Because he did it before in the Garden of Eden. He was successful, so he thinks he can be successful at any time. But if you are sensible enough, when that devil knocks on your door, you will close it real good. You will lock it double. Let's see together. One, two, let's read. Everybody read. One, two, three, go. I search for a man to do what? A God speaking. Among them that should make the hedge and stay in a gap before me for the land. So God is saying, there's no need for you to come to me. I, I want somebody that will stay in a gap for you. But a lot of times we misinterpret scripture. We don't look for a scripture that suit us. And the one that in line, we don't really call the one that in line. Somebody shout hallelujah. We don't look for scripture that favor us. And the one that we don't want, we don't talk about it. The devil is a liar. There's a narrow way. And that narrow way, it leads to the broad way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Listen to me. But Isaiah, if you let God fight for you, if you allow God to fight for you, you will sit in your seat and say, what in the world I was trying to fight for myself? Because God is a perfect fighter. Can I tell you a story? Let me tell you something. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This one for you. Let me say it to you. Or, or let me say it to you. Should I say it to him? Or let me say it to everybody. Somebody shout hallelujah. But this is for you. Amen. Because he walked in that role of being a minister. Amen. As a man of God. Let me say this to you. Now listen to this. Who here got gold chain with a cross on it? Real gold. You got a gold chain with a cross on it? That's gold. Real gold. With a cross on it. All right. Let me borrow it. Yeah. You got a you got a, you got a ring with a cross. Give it to me. Take it out so the real one can come. All right. Amen. This is a real gold with a cross on it. You see the cross? Are you with me? This gentleman, he's so proud to wear the cross. And no one, no Christian, will see a cross, especially the gold, and refuse it. Everybody want to identify with the cross. Every Christian want to identify with a cross. Someone said hallelujah. hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you know, when you go shopping and see some clothes that have cross on it, you want to buy it. Why? As a Christian, because you see the cross on it, that means you want to identify the cross belong to Christ. But can I tell you something? The cross that you admire, it was not admired before. Ah, nobody hear what I'm saying. Can I tell to somebody? The cross that you admire, it was not admired before. Back in the day, cross me disgrace. When they want to disgrace you, they nail you on the cross for degradation. They use a hand thief on the cross to disgrace him. They use a hand murderer on the cross to disgrace him. Amen, somebody. Why? Because the cross was meant for disgrace. In Jesus' mighty name. It was meant for disgrace, no, so it was meant for disgrace. That's why they put Jesus on the cross with a thief and a, and, and, and a murderer to disgrace him. They were disgracing thief those days on the cross. They were disgracing them until they disgraced the wrong thief. They disgraced the wrong man. Who turned that disgrace to honor? Can I tell the somebody here? If Christ would not go on our cross and die and resurrect him, no one will want to be identified with a cross. No one want to be identified with a cross. But I come to talk to somebody today in the name of Jesus. 
I don't want to know. I don't care what the enemy been trying to disgrace you. As long as you are for Jesus, that this world will take to honor. But God always use, God always use your disgrace. He use your disgrace to honor you. Whatever the enemy have been using, whatever the enemy be using against you, I come to prophesy the temperance. Your disgrace will take to honor. In the name of Jesus, I say your disgrace will take to honor. In the name of Jesus, grab with this grace so that you can be honored. Christ took the shame so that you can shine. Christ took the insult so you can have resort. Cry with this grace for you to have the grace. Am I talking to somebody here? I can't go talk to somebody. If God be for her, who can be against her? I don't know who I came to talk to. I came to talk to somebody that will look at some things and say, hear me. I love the Lord. I don't care what I go through. I love the Lord. Somebody say, I love him. The cross was meant for shame. The cross was meant for shame. It was Christ who took the disgrace on the cross to bring honor to the cross today that every Christian wants to wear cross. He brought honor to it. So I want to talk to somebody. Don't be afraid when people are disgracing you. Don't be afraid when they are talking about you. When they're talking all manner of things concerning you. Because God will not use different things to glorify you. You will use the same thought they are talking against you to glorify you. Somebody shout hallelujah. You will use that same thing. You will use it. I don't move. Oh my goodness. I'm saying that. I'm serious. Some of you could have been moved. I'm not moved. Pastor Kofa said it all. I'm not moved. I'm not hurt. When somebody hurt me, I'm not. Because I know God will use it for my help. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some of you praying with Father. People pay. People pay people in the Bible. Just to be their father. You don't know that? Have you seen that? Have you seen that? that somebody pay somebody in the Bible to be their father? Have you seen that? Pastor Kova, have you seen that? You have not seen it. That somebody pay somebody just to be their father. The father, the spiritual father who today we throw it away. We don't recognize, we don't honor. Somebody pay somebody say, please just be my father. Here's some money. Judges chapter 17, let's go there. So we can learn something. You need a father. Don't let no witchcraft, no demon tell you don't need a father. You are headed for destruction. Because maintaining a father in your life guarantees your longevity. I repeat, somebody say with me. Maintaining a father in your life guarantees your longevity. Whosoever that honor their father and their mother, a day may be long. It don't mean it can be a spiritual father, your biological father. <coughs> Are you there? Somebody pay. You see how it's so important to be of, to have a father. People are paying people to be father. People paying people to be pastors for them. Give me verse ten. Look at verse ten so we can learn. Verse ten of Georgia. That's the Bible. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh-huh. Let's read together. Let me, I'm not the one who wrote it. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. And Micah said unto him, dwell with me, unto me, a father, and a priest, and I will give thee ten. Oh, my goodness. Listen to me. Hear me. He said, listen to me. Be with me. Stay with me. Be a father. I will pay you ten thousand dollars. Say for you to be my father. A year, a day per year. Can you imagine this? And some of you are coming for free. Oh, the devil is a liar. You gotta stop paying. Somebody say amen. You got me for free. Please say you got me for free. But I know that you got me for free. I'm not talking to somebody here. No wonder you got me for free. You got me for free. 
I pray day and night, fast day and night. Be there for you with a good heart. We ready to help my feeling. And when I say, oh God, oh God, a painful to love somebody who walk away from you. A painful to love somebody that you love. A very painful. Nobody tell me they will be happy. Somebody you got good intention for, that you love so much, and then you hear the person die. Or you hear the person walk away from you. Do the hurt and pain it can cost you? Look at me. Look at me. Don't be a part of that. Don't be a part of hurting anybody. Whatever you can do to bring joy to your spiritual father, to bring joy to your spiritual mother, continue to do it. Because it pays. When your spiritual father grieves, it will not be profitable for you. Hebrews 13 verse 17. He bow said, it will not be good. And Micah said unto him, dwell with me and be unto me a father and a priest. That word priest means pastor. Don't just be my father, be my pastor as well. And I will give thee ten shekels of silver by year. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. And a, a, a suit hey. from Nima's marker. Somebody say, amen. You mean a suit? <laughs> Thank you. You're getting something. Not just so they will take you spiritual father for granted. Listen, this lady here, this man did not born them. He not a biological child. But then he say, because you can't pay your biological child, I mean your biological father to be your father. Because automatically, you already your father. So they in the past of scripture, they're pressing here, and this man that they were paying had no connection. He said spiritual. He said, dwell with me, and I will be a father. I mean to be a father, and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by year, a suit of a pearls, and that virtuous. So the Levi went in. So the man went in and said, no problem. I will be your father. The important for father. The near for father. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The important for father. That's what we don't understand. We take it for granted. And people paying here for it. There's a need. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There's a need. When you have a spiritual father, you protect that spiritual father. Why? Because God passes blessings. I know today, I don't care for the nonsense and the jargon that went, that going around. God can bless me regardless of father or not. I don't care for that. I believe the Bible. I'm teaching you the Bible. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The only person I will tell you that don't have father is the person that don't have one. Anyone I tell you that don't have spiritual father, he don't have one. A person I will say that don't get married, they don't have one. There's no way I will be married and tell somebody I say marriage is wrong. True or false. So I can't be having a spiritual father that I honor and be telling somebody I say it's wrong. To have a spiritual father, to honor a spiritual father. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 6 verse 1, he said, if I'm your father, where is my honor? So there's a need that you honor your father. There's a need on your father day. I appreciate the honor that was given to me. And in return, I must bless you by because you know what? That's why it's supposed to be. I'm just trying to tell you, you don't have to do it every, 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 every June. July good too. August good. Amen, somebody? Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. So it's very important, Pastor Joshua. Yes, somebody paying somebody to just be a spiritual father to them. So it's very important. Amen. Why? Psalm 127, the Bible says in Psalm 127, verse 5, I believe that the songs, because when God talks about songs, he means daughters as well. Because in the reign of the spirit, there's no male or no female. God calls sons, God calls daughters sons. He also called son the same. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. The sons are supposed to protect their father. And they say the enemy is coming. It's the son. The son the one who make the father father. So your duty, 
Ah, Camille, what a lecture here. Your duty <laughs> is to protect your father. Why? Well, because through your father, God blesses you. And you go father. Because your father will be the one who teach anyone who is a child and don't want their father to just start there. They are not a child. And before you become a father, you are once a child. So you know what a child needs. A real father will want to check on their children. A real father want to know their children need. A real father care for their children when they're crying. A real father care when their children are hurt and complain to them. Somebody shout hallelujah. A father heart. But today we see people disrespecting their, 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 their parents. Can I tell you something? Look at First Timothy chapter 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 one verse f- f- chapter five verse one quickly. First Timothy, let me show you this thing real quickly. See it real quickly. See it real quickly. See it real quickly. Let me help you real quickly so we can learn. Can we see that? Everybody read that for me. Everybody read that for me. One, two, three. Oh, you're not seeing it, right? They're going to see that thing on the screen. What is it? Rebuke now. An elder. God is saying, don't disrespect elder pressing. How must you treat an elder pressing? But instill, entreat him as father. And a young man as brethren. Today we see people opening their mouth to talk against People that can bond them. People that are older than them. There's no respect in the body of Christ. They won't want to be successful. How can you be successful when you're walking in disobedience and disrespect? How can the blessing of the Father reach you? Honestly, how can you reach you? By honoring your Father, see, see, it reaches you. Amen. Amen. Don't rebuke an elder man. Treat him as a father. Treat him what? As a father. Which means honor people that are older than you. Because there's a need. Elijah cried, my father, my father, when he couldn't see a father no more. Who crying for a father today? Who here say, I need a father? Who don't need a father? Listen to me. Father who does not imply age. Jesus was 12 years old and the older man was stay on him. It don't matter age because the blessing there's a need. God is saying, I'm looking for a father that will stay in a gap to pray for the land so that I can destroy the land. So God is looking for the true fathers. God is looking for true sons. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. This is what the scripture say. What the scripture say? Rebuke not an elder, but treat him as a father, and young man as brethren. If you want your blessing, a lot of dishonor to lay in the battle of Christ. Too much dishonor, too much disrespect, too much, too much. That's the reason why today you turn Facebook, the person is there. Rest in peace, 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 rest in peace. People are dying in a number. Some of them may say, okay, they are people who respect parents and they still die. I agree. But do you know how they die? Amen, somebody. Amen. If they do it, they stay obedient, they die. That's God. But what God is telling me that you should respect older people, that your day may be long. Many of us will talk to older people anyhow. Look at the scripture. Rebuke. And some of us now will rebuke our oldest people, rebuking. Some of us can rebuke our pastor and all. Can you imagine the kind of disrespect that in the body of Christ? Can you imagine the kind of dysfunction that is in the body of Christ? And people not realizing this. Somebody paying somebody to be a father to them. Paying somebody to be a father. Every year, I want you to be a father. Amen, somebody. Amen. If I'm your father, where is my honor? Where is my honor? In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Where is my honor? The Bible says, A truthful son brings joy to his father. Proverbs 20, 23, verse 24, my last scripture, and I leave. 
There's a lot of scripture here, but I'm going to leave this. In Psalm 127, say, A good son will prevent the enemy from coming to his parents. He will speak to them at the gate. Psalm 127, verse 5. He said, and a son speak to the enemy. A son will never allow, a daughter will never allow anything to happen to your father. You have the right. God give you the right. As a father, God give you the right. As a child, to not let anything happen to your father. Psalm 127 verse 5, that's what the scripture say. Speak to them to the gate before they enter. That's what Peter could take knife and chop somebody's ears up. Now we're coming to the father. He was protecting his father. But today we are disgracing our father. The, let me tell you something. There are people who have not spoken to their father for two years. Today they send their father they test. <laughs> two years you have not spoken to your father. But today you got it. <laughs> Happy Father Day. I will delete it. If I'm the one, I will delete it. And I will block your number. Because two years you have not spoken to me. You don't know what happened to me. You don't know what's going on with me. Then you go send me Father Day. If you are not spoken to me for two months, don't send me Father Day. I don't want it. Because in a much as children can, mother can carry father for child support, you can carry your children for. <laughs> We're going to turn it around. We'll start carrying you for children for father support. And I carry a few person here after service <laughs> for father support. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm carrying you. You know what you want. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, okay. Clavena, you want. Taking you to court. <laughs> Mata, you want. I'm taking you to court. You the mean one sitting over there with the glasses. <laughs> because I've seen you for two years. You come on Father Day. <laughs> two years I've seen. Child. You know how I feel to be in the presence of the Lord? I feel oh, it's joyful thing to fellowship. Hallelujah. Two years I've seen Isaiah. Two years. Maybe more than two years. Let me see what your wife said. Is that true? Oh, my three. I like. Can we, can we pray for you? Can we pray for you? Can, 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 can. She's not like Anaya and Sophia. Amen. Anaya and Sophia. The moment they ask Anaya, is all the money? Yeah. They asked her, well, is that true? She said, yeah. She joined her husband, <laughs> and they died. She said, you will die by yourself. <laughs> Two years, she said, almost three. <laughs> Let's see on our feet. Somebody clap to the Lord, amen. Let's honor our fathers. Even from right now, somebody can take me for it. So the more I will be ready to go. I can go put my wife to sleep and follow you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Let us step us, step up and honor our fathers. Proverbs 23, verse 24. You know what the Bible says? They really want them to leave. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And, and he that begotten a wise son shall have joy of him. You see there? Talking about songs. Having a wise song. Song that bring honor. Song that bring blessing to you. Having a wise song. The wise song. In Jesus' name. Amen. Honor your father. There's a need. When I saw people in the Bible paying people to be father, that why I knew that father who was so Somebody to be spiritual father is so important. Today we abandon those things. We don't very, really, very really respect those things. And we allow some people to speak negative things in our ears to tell us that, oh, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Raise your hand to heaven. 
In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Raise your hand to heaven. Father, bless them to be your good sons and good daughters. On a great Father Day, I pray, oh God, as a father of this house, and you are the above of all father. I'm asking you, Lord, for your blessings Amen. to put upon this one, Lord. Amen. That they will honor their father, not just on a father day, but they will honor their father each day and every month. Even, Lord, by obeying, as the revival is coming, Lord, they will speak to people from everywhere that they will come so that father can be proud of them. The other translation say, a father of a good son. A father of a good son. The other translation say, a son bring proud to his father. But there are some that cause him pain for their father. Have a father. The father will pray. Your blessing will be upon us. We will pronounce blessing on the obedient one. Even those who are not here that are watching from far and near will ask for your blessing to be upon them as well. That you make them to know the importance of a father. It's so powerful. You that are watching, you are not being enjoyed for a while. Come by home. Amen. Come and honor your father. Because it's so important. To have a father. When I read Judges chapter 17, verse 10, that people were paying people just to be their spiritual father. Every year, 10,000 just to be your father. And you got me for free. I'm willing to be your father. Father who don't have to do with age, how old you are, anything. It had to do with maturity and how you take care of your people. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. Were you were you blessed? Amen. Hallelujah. Let me see the hands of those that were blessed. Hallelujah. I mean, I was blessed as well. Hallelujah. Listen to me, I've been, I've been reading the Bible almost 35 years. Amen. Amen. And I've never got in contact with George's 1710. That my voice not hearing that today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I tell you, even we are pastors, we are, we are in the process of learning. Amen. So today, myself, I learn as well. Amen. Amen. I, I'm going to develop a sermon from that. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, that, that put, I, want, I want to put, put your hands in your pockets in your pocket, that get a seat. Amen. Amen. Okay, somebody said the person lost. But those are your whole persons. I stay with you. Okay, put your hands in your pocket. Let's just get a father this seat in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, there is no limit as to how you can honor your father. So even if you are giving before, you can still give again. Amen. Amen. So put your hands in your purses in your pocket. Amen. And come drive a father this seat on the altar. Amen. In Jesus' name. We'll do that and I bring the service to a closure. Hallelujah. Dear your prophet, thank you again for the word that came forth. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Okay, stand to your feet, let's pray. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. We say thank you for your word that came forth. Thank you for the insight that came forth. We pray that you grant your servant more grace. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, we also say thank you for those that decided to honor him today. Father, wherever they took that money from, Lord, let there be a wonderful return. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pronounce your blessings upon them. Father, as the honor your servant, Lord, we pray that there is no weapon formed against them that will prosper. We pray that the household will be blessed. We pray that the children will be blessed. We pray that going out will be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. And this thing, there was somebody that put money in the envelope and gave it to the prophet today. Amen. I'm seeing strange favor coming for that person. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm seeing strange favor. Listen, where this favor is going to come from, you, you, you never expected it will ever come from such means and medium. But I'm telling you, because you honor your men of God today, you honor your father today, God is going to make the impossible possible in Jesus' name. Father, we also pray for those that are sick in the body. We declare your healing upon them. Touch them by your grace. Father, we say, do you be praised? We say, do you be glory and all the honor? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Show them goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. And we want to say thank you for coming in Jesus' name.